Well, good evening. We're glad that you joined us here for our Wednesday night Bible study. And I ask you to take your Bible and turn to Exodus chapter 20 and verse 14. Uh, we will be looking at uh, the next commandment, thou shalt not commit adultery. Uh, let me make a couple of announcements, just to remind you. Please be sure you call the church office and let us know if you have a senior who is graduating from high school or college or with a master's or maybe from junior college. We want to know about that so we can honor them on the 7th of June, and we don't want to forget anybody. Also, remember on May the 31st, we'll be meeting uh, back here at the church on for Sunday morning service, and I hope that you'll make your plans to come and be a part of us if you can. We understand that uh, people of an age, maybe you've got a condition, they don't feel comfortable, but we will meet for those who feel comfortable. You can wear a mask. I encourage you, if you feel that makes you feel safer, please do so, and I hope that you'll come prepared, ready to worship. Let's begin with a word of prayer tonight. Father, as we come, we thank you for this beautiful day and the gift of life that you've given to us. Thank you, God, for the opportunity to open up your word again. And I pray that you would speak to our hearts to guide us, to direct us, and help us, Lord, as we go through this time of studying your word. I pray for the needs that people have in their hearts and their lives. And I pray that you just, God, be with those that are sick and restore them to health and strength. We pray for those, Lord, who've got burdens on their hearts. And we ask you to lift those burdens. We know that many people are downtrodden tired and wore out we just ask you to be with them and to help them and to encourage them through this time lord just help us to pray for one another help us god to love each other and lord to just take the opportunities that you give to us to share your great message of hope of salvation to a lost and dying world lord i pray that the words tonight will bring hope and strength to people for we ask it in christ's name amen as we begin tonight, I ask you to look down in verse 14 of the 20th chapter of Exodus. And it says, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Adultery. It was interesting, the Marriage and Divorce Journal sometime back said that 70% of all Americans had committed adultery. I read another article not long ago that talked about that uh, two, 50% of all men and 41% of all women had committed adultery. Uh, it's amazing that we live in the society we live in where adultery is accepted, uh, people living together and things like that. But God has given to us a word. And adultery is, is wrong. It, it, it is important that we understand it because uh, the family is primary, and it's, and it's important that we have loyalty and trust and love that are to be taught. And we realize that uh, adultery is something that is tearing families apart, causing shame and guilt and distrust that takes place. And God gave this to bring peace and harmony to the family. Thou shalt not commit adultery. What does adultery mean? Well, it means to debase, to corrupt oneself sexually, to make oneself impure sexually, to have sex outside of marriage. You become impure when you have sex outside of marriage. You know, we need to realize that Jesus took this a, a step further. And over in Matthew, when he talked about that adultery can begin in the heart and that a person can commit adultery in their hearts before they ever get to the act. We know that this is also true, that uh, the Bible talks about that it begins with a lust, a desire, a passion. That begins inside of a person. And so we realize and understand that this commandment is, is trying to teach us that uh, we're not to be uh, having sex outside of marriage. We're not to be thinking on having an affair or to be dwelling upon those passions that a person has. Well, what will cause us to commit adultery in our society? Well, the first thing I think that brings us about is because of a, 
a lower moral standards. When we have lower, lower moral standards, it brings us corruption. And corruption breeds. And what we're seeing happen is adultery is breeding in our society. It's becoming more and more prevalent. Uh, I was reading a thing as I was studying that said that uh, over the last 20 years, the statistics have stayed basically the same for men, but in women, it had doubled. So 20 years ago, that figure of 41 would have been about 20%, but 20 years later, it's increased to 41%. So we begin to realize that, that people are really beginning to have low morals. Some people have not been taught the truth. Some people haven't been taught that adultery is wrong, that it's wrong to commit that sin. Uh, they may be brought up in a home where uh, the truth was not taught to them. We also realize that uh, sometimes it's caused by selfishness. People are selfish. Sometimes it's because people think that they have missed out on something. Many years ago in my office uh, at another church I was at, I had a lady and her husband come and there had been an, uh, an adultery, uh, an act of adultery in that marriage. And I'll never forget, the lady looked and said, well, I married him at a young age, and I thought I was missing out. And, uh, you know, some people have that thought. Some people have that process in their mind. That they think they've missed out on something. And so they're looking for something exciting. They're, they're looking for something more in life. And some people will commit adultery because of loneliness. They're lonely. Uh, they're in a marriage, but they feel like nobody cares and nobody's interested in them. And so loneliness is one of the reasons that's given for people to commit adultery. Sometimes people feel like nobody else cares about them. They think they're missing out. And the morals of society are taking place. What this commandment is calling us is to obey God's word. That you and I should not commit adultery, either in our hearts or the physical act of adultery. Don't continue to take second looks. You know, if you want to avoid this, do not continue to take second looks and to look around. That's what the Word is trying to tell us. Jesus is talking about in Matthew 5, 28. There's that word, look. You know, if you look on someone and you've got that desire, that passion, in your heart, to Jesus, you've committed that. You've been unfaithful, and you need to confess that sin. You need to confess to the Lord what you've done. I think the second way that we avoid it is that we flee from the appearance of evil. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 22. If you get into a situation where you feel uncomfortable, then you need to leave. Don't linger. Don't, don't stay there. Uh, I think one of the great dangers today is that people think, well, I won't fall. I won't commit this sin. I won't do this. I would never be unfaithful. Well, the longer you linger in a situation that could get you into trouble, the more likely you are to get into trouble. You know, it's kind of like when you were a child growing up. And you remember uh, people would talk to you about don't run around with certain people, don't be in a certain place. Uh, it's not good to be there because nothing good's going to happen there. That's kind of the same thing with this. If you stay in a situation and you continue to put yourself in the, in the way of evil and lustful thoughts, well, it won't be long before you'll take yourself into that action and you'll find yourself drifting away from the Lord. In 1 Thessalonians chapter uh, 4, verses uh, 3 through 5, he tells us we should abstain. In other words, something that we should not do in our lives. Abstain from it. There's a lot of things that we're told to abstain from. And this is one of those things. In Ephesians chapter 5, verses 3 and 4, we're told that we shouldn't be talking about those things. You know, there's some things that just don't need to be talked about. And, and this is one of those issues. This is one of those things that you need to realize. And in Romans Chapter 8, verse, or excuse me, chapter 6, verse 12. We don't need to let sin have control of us. Bring your body unto subjection, Paul talks about. 
you and I need to realize and understand that uh, we don't want to let sin, we don't want our passions to rule our lives. Because if that's what happens, our passions will lead us away from God. They'll lead us into things that we have no business being into. And our passions take over and we're, we're out of control instead of being under the control of the Holy Spirit. So I encourage you to think about those things in life. You know, we don't need to love the things of this world. And we need to live a life that's sacrificed totally to the Lord. You know, Paul talks about presenting ourselves as a living sacrifice to the Lord. And we need to be sure that we are living such a way that uh, it's the way the Lord wants us to live, that holy and pure life. And adultery will lead us away from that, that life is sacrificed. What happens if you don't deal with it? Well, the first thing about this is you need to realize you need to repent. Because he tells us that those people, if you take your Bible and read 1 Corinthians chapter 9, 6, verses 9 through 11, he says adulterers are one of the people that are listed that won't inherit the kingdom of God. Because they've not repented. They, they're lost, they're living in the flesh, they're living in their own desires, and that we need to realize and understand that even if a Christian commits it, you've got to ask God to forgive you. One of the things that I always tell people when they have had people come to see me for counseling that have committed adultery, the first thing I tell them is, you've got to ask God to forgive you. You've got to seek repentance from God. And, uh, you know, some people won't do that. Some people have said to me, I'm not going to repent. But then I've seen other people who were broken and repented of their sin and asked God to forgive them and to cleanse them and, and to see what would happen. The second thing I've always told people is, not only do you need to ask God to forgive you, but you need to ask your mate to forgive you. There needs to be forgiveness from your mate because uh, if you can't ask them to forgive you, then you're not really going all the way. You need to go all the way to ask them to forgive you. One of the sweetest times that I can remember is the couple that came to see me. And, and I'll just be honest with you. Most of the time when this has happened, uh, the marriage it normally doesn't mend. It doesn't get back together. But this particular time, the couple did. And uh, I remember the wife looking at her husband and telling him she forgave him and seeing that embrace and that forgiveness that took place in, in my office that day. Um, there needs to be that forgiveness, that repentance, that acknowledging what you've done is wrong. Also, the God's Word tells us that there's a time of judgment. In Hebrews 13 and verse 4, it talks about to face the judgment of God if you don't repent. And we know that if you don't repent, that it will destroy you. Proverbs chapter uh, 6 and verse 32. Realizing and understanding that when you've committed adultery and you're trying to hide it, it just robs your soul. It drains you because you're always concerned somebody's going to find out. Somebody's going to see you. And so you need to realize that there is damage that takes place in your relationship with God, in your relationship in your marriage, and in, even in your own life, there's damage that takes place. Well, what are the benefits of keeping this commandment? Well, I think the first thing is in 1 Corinthians 6, verses 9 and verse 11. You have a right relationship with Jesus Christ. When you are obeying God's word, your fellowship, your walk with him will be what it ought to be. So I encourage you to think about this, that you don't linger looking and keep yourself out of situations that you could find yourself in, but that you realize that you don't want to do anything that would hinder your walk with the Lord. You want to have a walk with him. Secondly, is the unity, the faithfulness that you see in marriage. There's a great moment when the Genesis chapter 2 and verse 24 talks about they shall become one flesh. The unity that takes place between a husband and a wife. There's trust. There's unity that goes about 
you know, I think one of the things that, that begins to take place when you think about this is the very fact that that unity is broken when adultery is committed. And you want that unity to be stronger. You want that bond of trust to be stronger than it's ever been. And so you, you work together and you hold that unity in life. But also, adultery affects your prayer life. If you look over in 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 7 in, in Psalms, David talks about sin and how it robs us in our prayer life. You know, you don't want to harbor sin. You don't want, to, you don't want sin to be reigning in your body that it affects your prayer life. You want to spend time with God and you want to enjoy that time talking with God and enjoy that fellowship with God. But if you let sin reign in you and you've got this adultery, you've got these thoughts going on, it's going to rob your prayer life. And so be sure that you realize and understand that one of the great importances of keeping your mind and your heart and your body where it ought to be is because you want to have a closer walk with Jesus. I think one of the things that also happens is that a person who is faithful is going to be happier because that person knows that they're walking in the way that God would have them to walk. And so there's a greater joy. There's a greater sense of protection for their family, uh, for mental, emotional, and physical problems that can take place. And I promise you, when I've seen this take place, I've seen the spiritual problems. I've seen the physical problems. I've seen the person who felt like that they were so unworthy and their low self-esteem in life. But when you keep that promise and you don't commit this sin of adultery, then you're going to get to see a family that's stronger physically and spiritually and mentally and emotionally in life. So you realize and understand that God uh, gave this for a reason. You see, God wants us to be healthy. He wants us to be healthy spiritually. He wants us to be healthy physically. He wants us to be healthy emotionally. He wants us to be healthy mentally as well. So you don't want to break this commandment because when you do, then all of those things begin to break down in life. When I think about this, you also want to keep it because your body is the temple of God. Remember, Paul says to the church at Corinth, don't you not that your body is the temple of God? In that body, the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. You don't want to be doing things <clears throat> and saying things that are contrary to where God is at in your life. So you want to keep your life, you want to keep it clean and pure. You want it to be the temple uh, where God is at. I think one of the other things is you think about this too, that a person keeps their integrity uh, because you keep from, you're keeping your vows. You made a promise to love someone. You made a promise to be faithful to that person. And so you want to keep your vows. And that's the benefit of keeping this, that you do keep your vows and that you are faithful. Let me give you another reason. You destroy a testimony. You want to have a godly testimony. And if you break this commandment, it destroys your testimony. And you need to think about that. People get to where they don't trust you or people don't believe you because you've lied and you've cheated and all those things that go with adultery. And so you want to be sure that you are keeping yourself clean and pure so that your testimony can be everything that God would have it to be. This commandment, is so vital to the family. God talks about the importance of family. And we discuss the importance of family. Well, this commandment was given because God wanted the family to be everything that it could be. And he knew that adultery would ruin the foundation of a home, of a marriage. This wasn't given to, to just on a whim. This wasn't given by God just to... Uh, out of a moment of thoughtless. He gave this because he knew the damage. He knew the destruction that could take place. I could tell you right now, many, many people could give testimony to the damage that's been done because of committing adultery. They can give damage of their life. 
They can give damage to their spouse. They can give damage to their children and to their family. It's so important. Keeping ourselves sexually clean and pure so that we can be what God would have us to be. Just because our society says it doesn't matter. It does matter. I read an article this week that talked about, by the AP gave this article out about not using the term mistress anymore. That that was archaic. That's old-fashioned. And they said, I guess somebody would bring out their Bible. That's old-fashioned. That's archaic. It's old. It's not relevant. I promise you, this commandment is as relevant today as it was the day that God gave it. God knew the damage that would come about because of committing adultery in a family and in a marriage. As I've told you many times, God loves you, God cares about you, and God wants the best for you. That's why he gave this commandment. Be sure that you keep your heart clean. Be sure that you keep your thoughts clean. And don't allow those passions, those thoughts, to become an act. Deal with them in your life. Confess it to the Lord. Ask him for strength to overcome. And flee all appearance of evil. Abstain from evil. Why well, challenge it? Live like God would have you to live. Be faithful to those vows that you make to each other. Live those vows every day. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the truth of your word. And we thank you, God, for your word that teaches us the great things about how to live our lives. And I pray that you would help us to realize the damage that adultery causes in a marriage, in a family, and in society, and in the church as well. Lord, I pray that you would help us to not give in to temptation, but to overcome those temptations. And Lord, I pray that you will help us to apply your word every day of our life. Protect those people, Lord, that maybe right now are beginning to think about adultery in their hearts. Help them, God, to confess it, to turn away from it. And I pray, God, for people that maybe are in a, an adulterous situation, that they would confess it and break that off, to live the way you'd have them to live. Lord, I pray for your will to be done, to guide and to direct us in all that we do. For we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week in the Lord. And I look forward to you being with us on Sunday morning for our morning service.